everybody, it's Hussein Kabani and Steve Zonardo from the West End of Toronto. That's right. And this is East Meets West. Yes. Podcast. Right. Podcast. Podcast. Awesome. Podcast. Good buddy. What's our, right. What are we doing today? What's our topics? How are we... Uh... Well, you got a great topic over here. Yeah. I yeah. think this is cool. Very the interesting. Insolvency yeah. report. Yeah. Okay. So we got yeah. some of that. Uh, let's just kick it off with our weeks. How Fair enough. Week? Yeah. It was good. Yeah. Very positive week. I sold that, that listing, sold conditional that listing, that, that uh, condo that was was in selling, which was good, put that yeah. under contract. And then I picked up three listings this week, which Amazing, is good. Man. I had five appointments. Um, so one got canceled, which they changed their mind. And the other one is going to be moved to next week, which is good. Yeah. Cool. So it's, it's, we're on track. And, and awesome. actually, I think I have one today. I got to just verify. So yeah. it might be six appointments. So it's good. Yeah. It's I saw, to pick up. Yeah. yeah. I saw you put up that sold sign on the Angus listing. It looked really good. Yeah, man. that's yeah, uh, definitely. That, and that sale was really, really, really good. Your, your clients were just fantastic. Yeah, like no, Maureen and Cundin, they were like yeah. such, such very, uh, very nice people. Yeah. And it was good. Um, you know what? So look at, look what we did there because the deposit check came late yeah. and it was still it was like a written check it yeah. was not even oh it was uh, not certified no because okay. we had so much time with the condition yeah, right yeah, yeah so that it, it it probably took about maybe 10 days to get uh, deposited let's yeah. call it so yeah. i didn't report its sold condition until that check went through of course and there was zero calls zero Nothing. showings and nobody knew it was sold condition i kept it from the office just kept it internally on, yeah. the, on my our broker yeah, my yeah, brokerage yeah. And, uh, and it's just to kind of gauge. And I told Maureen that. I said, let's, let's just gauge it. Let's see if, if we made the right decision. Yeah. And zero. We made the right decision. Well, the house right yeah. next to them, that was the same house with more upgrades, sold for 680? 690, I think. 690. 695 or something. And then yeah. they got 715. 715, which is yeah. Really awesome. And two or three days in the market. So yeah, that's, that's killer. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. We, we had to do that sale upon purchaser's property, which is fair enough in that area. But, but you, took it, uh, you checked it out, right? Like yes, you made yes, sure yeah. the property was good. The agent that you were working with was realistic on what to list it Amazing. for. Whatever. Same so, last name. Uh, it was what was his last name? Uh, Donardo. Donardo. D- D- or that's something. Right, I like. so, that's awesome. <laughs> so it was good. Yeah, very very professional agents out there. They're from actually uh, Georgina, so like uh, Keswick area. Nice. And again, so they listed the property at four fifty nine. Yeah. That, that uh, bungalow. I did the, the research. I think it was sold in like three days. Perfect. It was awesome. So they and might they even advance. Right yeah, it was yeah. firmed up right away. They might even advance our closing, which yeah. your clients would appreciate. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Advance. So yeah, like the Marine and Pennant are coming back to my neck of the woods East again. Ends, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we're gonna help them out over yeah. here and that's awesome. get that moving. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. How, how was your week? You're banging it. Yeah. It's yeah. it's been pretty good. Like uh, getting back into a, a mode where we're yeah. getting things done and not enough time to even post them. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. Or whatever. Yeah. But I'm not concerned about posting the yeah. solds. But yeah. So we, we actually did good, especially uh, I would say uh, this week. Uh, this week we actually got into three conditional offers. Beautiful. Already. Yeah. So yeah. we got into three conditional offers. Um, it's a lower price point stuff that's still okay. kind of moving, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. we had stuff uh, as low as like five sixty five. All the way up to like 850. Yeah. The yeah. 850 one took a little while longer. There's a Did you sell, end up selling that one? Well, yeah, man, but it's such a, well, yeah. it's conditional as of yesterday on that property. Can't talk about price just yet. Yeah, not, not just yet. But the thing is, is that, you know, about uh, three weeks ago, we had like the house listed at uh, 8399. Yeah, yeah, 8399. Yeah. Uh, we got like four offers uh, sporadically over time. Uh, and then one guy did really want the property, came up to 840, so $100 over asking, whatever, but it came up to 840 exactly. Deposit check in hand. You can put a sign on your, on your you sign up yeah. there, over yeah, asking, 100 bucks. Yeah, I, I would. <laughs> I would. But, but look, like deposit check in hand, yeah. close whenever you want to close, no conditions, yeah, no yeah, nothing. And enough. my client counter offered at 850. Yeah, I remember you were saying that last, last podcast. Yeah, so when we were like 30 days in the market, I just said, like, we got to bring the price down. So we brought it down to 849.9, uh, and then we got an offer in on it. and I'll tell you, it's not what we had before, but at this point, which we discussed like, yeah. last podcast, yeah, not going to so happen. We'll see. Hopefully, it firms up by next week because of the Fair Monday enough. being the holiday, yeah, holiday. or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, it'll firm up by Friday, I think. So. Good for you, buddy. At least you got so we'll you see, banged yeah, it so out. So, we got those three. Uh, and then, yeah, there was another house that we made an offer on. We didn't get it in Pickering. It's like a crappy ass house. Like, really nice. So, this is the ideal situation that you want. It's in a really nice neighborhood, but yeah. the crappiest house. Yeah, like when enough. I say the crappiest house, I mean the crappiest house. Like inside of the place, like every, forget about drywall. I would want to remove every screw from that house. Like <laughs> forget about drywall. It is it. fucked. <laughs> like beyond belief. Like I don't want to swear on this thing, but it, like there's no other way to put it, man. Like this is a house. What year? It's built in 83. So it's like 35, 36 year old mm-hmm. house, but it is mangled. Like there's no ceiling to save. There's no drywall to save. There's no plumbing. To rented save. property. Yeah, rented property. Yeah. Uh, rented to a relative. Nice. The property is mangled. So when you go in, there's one shower upstairs, one full washroom. You open the shower curtains. I don't know who would touch it, but you open the shower curtains. <laughs> 
dude, their tile is missing. Yeah. It's missing. There's a garbage bag that covers that <laughs> section. That's what amazing. are you gonna do, man? It's such a shitty. A shitty you should house. post that on Instagram. Forget about these luxury bathrooms, like, buddy. I didn't want to touch myself while I was in that house. I don't want to bring up my. Yeah, like I don't I, like. Jeez, man, and, and the staircase was probably so bad, the carpet, they just took the carpet right off of it. Like it's Wow, that bad. Yeah, so nasty. Listed at 540, we dropped them off for at 5, 520, they didn't take it, and my guys, hey. my guys, my guy's a really smart guy, man. He's just like, you know what? See you later. Nice What's he gonna do with it? To clean it up, sell it? No, like it's, his daughter, his daughter's gonna, like, you know, she wants to buy it. Sure. But, you know, he, they're smart people, man. They're not gonna buy into that junk. What's right? wrong with that realtor if it's in that condition? Well, what's the value? But, what do you think the value is on that property? Look, if that property is fixed up, yeah. everything is great Clean with that property. It all out. Yeah, I, I would say like at a minimum, minimum level, six and a quarter, 635, like, but honestly, like the only thing you that you can grand? salvage from there, the only thing you can salvage, there's a furnace that was installed in 2015. But even the, the piping so that good. goes around it, like there's so much heat loss, I could feel it. I'm standing in the basement around this furnace. Like <laughs> more of the heat is coming towards me from this furnace than upstairs. Like everything is mangled, dude. Like everything is mangled. Wow. So yeah, he calculated it out and he's like, I, he messaged me back and he's like, it's like 115,000 bucks to renovate most of it. Yeah, fair enough. If he does most of and it. And he just like nice. Yeah, and if he just gets an electrician, home. plumber and yeah. whatever, just to do the technical stuff or sure. whatever. Yeah. If he does all the labor, it's yeah, 110,000. Might not be a bad buy, right? It's okay. But at the right price. But, but see, that's but that's them putting in 110. Yeah. Someone can go in that wants to just flip it and do a crappy ass job. I think they can put 40, 50 into it and flip it. Why don't we buy it? You want to buy it? <laughs> You're scarred. <laughs> I don't know, man. What I saw in that house, it's really changed my opinion. I, I essentially told my client at that point, I that's said, You're, you're buying a piece of land. You're buying a piece of land and just a structure of a yeah, home. Yeah, like, just yeah. pretend that that's all there is. There's nothing inside Bricks of this place. And wood. This is it. Yeah. I'm telling you, dude, you, if you went into that place, first of all, I don't think you would walk through it. I, I don't think you would walk through it. And I'm telling you, you would agree Remember, I'm a me. landlord. I've been through a... <laughs> You're a landlord in nice places. This is like... I've been through oh, much. Dude. Nice neighborhood. Yeah, really, really, enough. really yeah. nice neighborhood. Yeah. Whatever. Nice, nice How big is the lot? 50? Uh, no, the, the lot is about 30. No, it's a detached single car garage home. Uh, it's like 36 feet. So it's like 35, 36 years old. So like, yeah, it's two story. So the lots are a little bit bigger. It was like 36 by 117. Nice. Yeah. Something. Yeah. It backs onto a plaza, but it's a nicer plaza, whatever. So I wasn't too concerned about that yeah, based yeah. on the price and yeah. stuff like that. Overall, you could tell the street, everybody keeps their house nice. So like, it's essentially the right option with the, the shittiest house on a really nice street. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot, there's value left in that. Place. Maybe the realtor will, uh, will come back at you at one point. No, you know, that's on them. Yeah. Like they yeah. know where we kind of stand yeah. with the property. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, is that, you know, they even ended up in a, in another offer. Like they got another offer. Oh, there you go, bud. It's like I got five of these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, they ended up in another offer as well. And I'm just thinking to myself, Hey, if like, if I was in this situation, this deal would have been done. They were like playing it in a really weird way. And, and the agent, agent I don't want to get harp, uh, like, I don't want to yeah. kill this thing, but you know, she even messaged me back. Well, we had 52 showings. I was like, you're retarded. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're retarded. Yeah. But the yeah. thing is, is that I, when I get like, I know my, I know my number of showings to offers. Okay. We had the offer or, or uh, listing on Roslyn uh, in Ajax. So we had 18 showings and I had three offers. So, so I know my uh, showing yeah, yeah, to yeah. Uh, offer ratio. I was like, lady, like you should have had like six or seven offers yeah, on this property. Yeah. I said, I didn't tell her this, but I'm thinking to myself, if I had this house, It'd be dude, gone. it would have been sold. Yeah. It would have been sold firm. It would have been done. Even 499 hold offers. This is exactly yeah. what I told yeah. my client. This is exactly what I told my hold client offers. when showed up. Yeah. 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 520, 525, gone. We offered them all right. Yeah. They won't take it, yeah. but they're done. Yeah. It's, it's a matter of letting, and, and I'm not saying the client shouldn't have an input. It's their house or whatever else like that, but it's about setting the expectations correctly and then yeah. helping your client make the best decision. Like, look at, I'll backtrack it to the example I had where this house was listed at 839.9. We got the 840 offer. I really told them, like, I really think you should take it. It's not my yeah. house. You could yeah. get a better offer. Yeah. I'm not sure, but like, it, this seems like very positive. The last house yeah. sold was 840 and yeah. that was a nicer house. Like your house is not so nice. Like maybe you should take this offer. You know what I mean? But they, but they don't listen. Uh, sometimes they don't listen, yeah. but like this other uh, client, like I think they should really have yeah, coached this client 100%. better. Yeah. I have it. So I have, we put out an offer last night, same, same idea. So, you know, this guy's asking 869 for the property. The last one sold like 800. So 70 K it's almost yeah. like 9%, let's call yeah. it above, let's say the last property that yeah. sold. So what do I do here? So we blew an offer like 810 just to kind of feel them out. 
And I feel we will probably lock it up between 820 and 840, but now I'm trying to see how realistic the seller is. Yeah. Because they said, well, look at uh, the land registry because it's not a red, uh, it wasn't recorded on Treb. Look on land registry, look at the last sale. Yeah, 870, I go, but that was the end of 2017. Yeah, what do you want? It was the tail end of all that. Yeah. that and that house, same house was selling for like 900 at that point. So you see that like the trend of it coming yeah. down. You know, if you, if you had three three sales now in the last, uh, let's say, 2018, in 2018, around the low 800s, that's where you yeah, are. Well, right? that's where you are. Like, yeah. I, I mean, 2017 doesn't matter anymore. If you have comparable oh, yeah. sales in 2018, yeah. like, why are you looking at 17? A thousand percent. I, I mean, what you said even before, I think, it's like three months, right? Like, really, I, I'm looking at three months. Three I'll stretch months, it to yeah. six if I have to yeah. to kind of stay in the neighborhood. But... Uh, three months. And if you have enough sales in three months, that's it. And they're all there. Yeah. Like there's so many happening right now. Inventory's moving like crazy. I don't know. You're probably experiencing the same thing out here. Yeah, it's, it's like price points, but yeah, it's yeah, it's quick, 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 quick. Yeah. Even, even high price points. I'm looking even at the two million dollar range because last week, last week or this week here, I picked up a few like more higher end listings. One two point six. One at just shy of one four. The appointment last night was at one eight. And the other one's about eight, eight and a half, whatever. Yeah. So this is high price point. But I was looking at the comps. So I was doing more research in, in this uh, bracket in the last, like, uh, you know, let's say six months. They're moving two and a half, two, two, three, two. But four. these houses were like three million bucks almost. Before. Fair enough, yeah. Yeah. So but, so they've come down a half a million. No, no, a thousand percent. So they're yeah. on sale. They're on sale, yeah. but they're moving. You, we are yeah. always thinking in our minds that people don't have the Hiring. money. That two million dollar yeah. mark is no I, money. I think they'll move, but I think you got to be realistic with days on market. Fair enough. Right? Yeah. Like like yeah. I have this like so for Pickering, it's it's. it's it's kind of the expensive price point. Like, so we have a listing right now that's just under $1.2 million. Yeah. Honestly, very low traffic on it, but it will move. But yes, it's going to take enough. time. Yeah. It's going to take 60 days. It might yeah. take 90 days. Yeah. It's going to move, yeah. but... You get limited showings, time. then you get those two serious buyers, and you get one offer, then the, you execute. You know, the, out of the three actual showings that we've had, like two people are, were interested on yeah. it. One yeah. didn't bought something else for a layout reason, and one is still like there. Like They just need to get over a couple of things. Hurdles, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But like they're there, so the people that were showing up are legit. 100%, yeah. 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 Unlike these other houses, like you, you know, you're going to set up, your, your agent's going to set up like... You're looking at like six hundred to seven hundred thousand bucks. Like your agent's gonna show show you like eight eight places in yeah, one fair day. Enough, you yeah. Know what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, right. Like there's no option here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So your inventory is moving good too, eh? Yeah, inventory we're, is we're moving really 12, good. Twelve thousand six hundred units as of yesterday. Yeah. So it's still very very short. It's, eh? it's short. I man. thought we'd have been a little bit higher by now. You know, I think maybe part of it is gonna be the weather and whatever else like that right now. Uh, yeah. I, I think people are a little bit skeptical. And and if anyone's listening to this now, I wouldn't be skeptical about putting out the house. Right no, now. It has to inventory go. is low. Uh, weather is shit. I get it, but yeah. people are coming out. There's serious buyers yeah. out there. There's really a lot serious of positive buyers. information in the media yeah. right now. I think that's pumping up the public too. So you're ta they're talking about lowered interest rates naturally. Um, the stress test they want to release, yeah. release either relieve it by one percent or remove it, which I don't think they'll do it this year. I got to be honest. I think it's just more of a morale yeah. adjustment. But it's, it's it's putting an influx on the market sure with buyers coming out with, with a positive uh, uh, mindset. And what was the other factor? And just lack of inventory, right? right. So it's just you know, people are buying. I think I think it'll probably take us a month from now. So we're we're what mid mid to end of February, mid to end of March. I think our inventory position will pick up, and I think we'll probably start to be in the spring market at that point. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I think it's going to come early. Yeah, yeah. I I, I think we're not yeah. there yet. It, things that seem like they are, but I don't think we're there yet. No, no, but no, for we sure. We will be there. I think in the next month or so. Well, there's bidding wars on properties. I can't believe lack it. of inventory again, yeah. right? Like, yeah. look, almost everything, buddy, that we've uh, put up so far, like almost everything, has kind of. I, I, maybe not multiple offers presented at the same time, but like getting offered this day, yeah, okay, yeah. this didn't work out, okay, another three one days later, in. another yeah, one, yeah, two yeah, days yeah. later, another yeah. one, so, so it's happening. And it's funny, yeah, and it's funny enough because it's almost I'm like... I'm trying to bunch them up, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah you put them together. Yeah, but, I had uh, that, that condo we just sold now, it was, you know, 40-odd showings, and then there was no offers. Then one weekend, this guy submits, a, this lady submits an offer, very serious buyer, very good agent, too. And then it was like three showings shortly after, hey, uh, we want to put an offer in, too, or, you know... What's going on? Let me know. We don't want to compete, but we have an offer for you. But it was just that weekend. Yeah. So we were, you know, let's say 30 days prior, 40 showings, nothing. And then just those three days, it was like three potentials, like right away. And then we, we sold it conditional that weekend. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of crazy how, the, how everything is so fluid. Everything's running together yeah. at the same time. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. how do we counter that? How do we bring more people earlier? Like the real uh, agents with these buyers, right? Because it's, it's almost like they went at the same point. It's like we all started this wide uh, range and they, they, they pointed into this one weekend. You know, the, right? like, I, like, I don't know. Is it media? What's, what's the, where's, where is that? Like, what's happening? Sometimes what I'm finding is, is that when they find out that there's an offer register, I think that a lot of the agents haven't got it in their mind yet that you can, like, 
so, quickly. so 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 last year or whatever else like that at the like you know last year to a certain point you were telling your client okay well yeah you like this house i get it you can think about it a little bit whatever else like that yes, and fair then enough. we'll come back to it yeah. next few yeah. days or yeah. next week or yeah. something let's go take a look at it yeah so uh, that's not what the case is so i think what's happening is is that when we're getting a registered offer go through now then they're like oh shit like we were looking at that property yeah. so that's the that's the yeah. feedback i'm getting from agents yeah I think for us, like, and I know you do the same thing, like we always have like aggressive follow-up with yes, the agents yes, and yes, stuff yes, like yes, that. Yes, so yes, we're yes. keeping in touch with them. So yeah. I think that we're not allowed to tell them that we might get an offer, of yeah. course, right? But I, but I share like the real feedback with other agents that indicate like, cause we ask them like, do you, is your client interested in this property? Do you, do you see them bringing forward an offer in the next few days if they don't see anything else? They're like, yeah, we do. Oh, okay, just wanna let you know that this is a conversation I've had with a couple of agents, not trying to, Get you to write me an offer but yeah. i want you to be aware that there is something happening over here 100 percent. So i'm yeah. trying to drop them the hints yeah. that yeah. are for real people that are for real yeah but then all, all the time i think when someone pulls a trigger then they don't want to lose out 100 percent. then they, they come so it's hard forefront. yeah i think it's hard right now to try to preempt that yeah I, i'm just curious because these these are all they have 40 showings and one weekend everyone's just got it this one one you know three-day weekend right or maybe whatever. like but it's see the thing is i'm not even sure if people will understand like like with agents and especially us, like think about somebody throwing a package at you and you're doing all these showings. Like, are you really gonna go through this fucking thing right now? No. no. <laughs> so so, so the, all the other way is, is that basically showing them the value, right? Like you yeah. assemble a package and say, boom, 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 this is what's sold, this is what's sold, this is what's sold. This is the inventory position right now. Like I think if your clients are serious, boom, you should bring us an offer. 100%, yeah. Right, but like who's gonna look at that? If you send me that, I'm gonna be like, have a nice day, bud. Yeah, yeah, fair like, I gotta move yeah. on, yeah, I gotta yeah, go yeah. next. There's, there's yeah. four others yeah, that yeah, just yeah, look like yours. Yeah. yeah. I find even, yeah, we, even, even properties that we couldn't sell in 2017, like yeah. even my, my per, like stuff that I, like that farm like that property, land. farm yeah, yeah, property, yeah. even, even the, the condo, like these were listed in 2017, right? And then I just told them like, just take them off the market. Let's lease them. If you can hold on to them, you can afford it. Yeah, lease them out for it. a year and we'll, we'll, we'll play it by year uh, in, in this year, right? 2019. And that's exactly what we did, but everything's selling. Yeah. Even listings that may have, they've gone another ways. They, they've sold quick. Lack Same of price. Man. It's just timing. Yeah. It's, it's timing because yeah. of the inventory, right? Like in yeah. 2000 and something, 17 really weird things happened, right? Fair like enough, yeah. everyone had this greed. Like yeah. I could, you could feel the greed oh in the gosh. air. The greed was so strong, right? Uh, and the thing is, is that when that when that balloon popped or whatever at that time in middle of April, people with greed yeah. didn't get the idea. They yeah. still thought that their eight hundred thousand dollar house would fetch a million dollars. It caused a lot of noise. So Absolutely. of course, like people that actually needed to sell their property. You know, like some of your clients were in a good position where they can say, I can yeah, hold on to it. Off it. And, and go. so, yeah. so now that inventory is a little bit scarce right now, I think it's moving. They're moving like yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, like, look, th there is a property that we listed even in a new subdivision. And I'm thinking to myself like, wow, man, these two rooms are tiny as hell. Like, I don't yeah. know. I don't know if this is going to happen. We have a bunch of showings through. Like, no, everyone's like, these rooms are tiny, like really? tiny, tiny, tiny. Was it townhouse? Yeah, townhouse. It's a back-to-back, three-story, three bedrooms, two and a half washrooms. But the two rooms are tiny. Like, didn't want to stage it. Whatever client didn't want to stage it. Uh, they're so tiny, dude. Like, you, you step foot in. Like, you and I go in this room, and we're just like, we'll, like we need to like kind of move around each other to like, really, eh? yeah, to get to a closet. Like what, like, an eight by eight by eight? Yeah, I would yeah. say eight by eight if we're lucky. Maybe yeah. like seven and a half or seven. Like okay. these, these are just for the purpose of saying I got three bedrooms. Wow, you know? like it's it's small, man. Um, but yeah, so like, I thought we, I, I know we listed at the higher end. I know they have to sell the place. So I said, okay, I don't mind. Like we might catch somebody. So we came down a bit, but like we did, we got somebody Excuse on so that house. So yeah, security. yeah, we got somebody like, was there had, much like, inventory beside you? No, but see, the thing is, is that, or similar. Yeah. Like uh, they're, they're nothing really similar. I just like, I don't know. Like I'm still waiting for this appraisal to go through and, enough, and all yeah. this other stuff, but yeah. it's just a. It's it's weird what's kind of happening. Then again, we're in mid to end of February right now. I think in a month or six weeks from now, I don't think this is going to be the case. I think that there's going to be more inventory yeah, that's going to come sure. up. Yeah. Things are going to have to get realistic and again or whatever else. So I think in the next month or so is a good time for some, if someone's ready to go and they're just waiting for the weather to get better. I don't think this is a good. No, idea. we got to go now. Yeah, yeah, this so is not I, a good I, idea. The listing I picked up this week for one, one three eight nine. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go on the higher end. It's probably worth about one three to one three fifty. I'm going to say between this bracket. And I told my clients up front this is where we're, we're going to be. Uh, I, so I, I took the pictures in the summer. Yeah, you know, there is a little bit against it. Let's. I don't want to take. It. I said, let me just take the exterior. I said because by the time you know, you guys want to get in the market, it's going to be snow. At least we'll have summer shots. So yeah. I did. I took a nice all exterior, beautiful. We have that all in the archives. 
And then ultimately now, I, I'm like I'm pushing, we gotta go, and now we're moving to go maybe Feb 20th to go on the market. What happens yesterday? Coming yeah. soon sign. Now we know the neighbor's gonna sell. Coming soon was gonna be over there. And then we're gonna be, now we're gonna have three signs on the, oh, on, wow. like in 14 houses, right? Because wow. they're a state neighborhood. So it's just like, you know, that's why we gotta beat, we gotta beat the people to the punch. Because we don't want the guy, the first guy to put the coming soon to set the price for us. Yeah. Because we come out higher, those buyers or those sellers are gonna tell their realtors, well, they're at 1389 or 1369, whatever we are, we're gonna be at. Let's, let's stay competitive to them. Because if we let them set the price, if they've been bamboozled by the agent, say, let's go at 1299. Pushing, pushing, right? Like it's, and it's not even, there's no salesman tactics. It's just, yeah. you can kind of, it's a, like a prophecy. You can see like yeah. the future with this, right? If we let other people set the price, we're going to be affected financially. So if that guy sets a one, two, nine, nine, very similar square footage and we're at 80 K over, what do we have more to offer? But if we set it at one, three, 80, whatever we're going to go at, they're going to make go maybe because we have a better house than maybe one, three, 30, one, three, 50. So it's sort of, we're, we're kind of like helping each other out with this, right? See, see, I'm sure you do this too. But when I see that happen, I call the other agent. Hey, do you I really? See, yeah. yeah. I guess. What are you going to live for? Dude, no, yeah. I do it. And I say, Hey, look, man, I'm going to have a listing here. Yeah. I don't know if my sign went up yet or not, but it is going to be here. Yeah. You know, uh, I know that you have a listing coming up I, and I offer the information first. Yeah. I always offer the information first. This is our house. This is the address. This is the square footage. This is the details of the house. We're going to list it at X. What are you guys doing? Like, I just want to make sure that we're going to be able to get the best result for our client. Like, what are you guys doing? It's a divorce case. I can't even. I wouldn't say that. Yeah. I, I, like, I, like, dude, I have a lady that already bought a house somewhere in Whippy and we're selling her place. Someone calls me and asks me like, hey, so why is this person? Oh, she's downstairs and you move in with her daughter. <laughs> I made that shit up right on the spot. <laughs> Oh, she bought a place. We're multiple. She's leveraged. Like, so we're stuck. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. No, yeah. man. I just fucking yeah. tell them something. Yeah, of course, off. of course. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Uh, they're expecting. Yeah. They're expecting and they're going to go move closer to their parents so they yeah. don't have to pay for daycare. Yeah. But they're going to sell first and then yeah. buy later. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. real. Yeah. Or they're going to move in with their parents. The parents got to yeah. stay at home. It's just a joke house, man. Don't yeah. worry. <laughs> yeah. but whatever. Like, I'll yeah, come yeah. up with something, right? Yeah, no, for sure. I'll come up with something. And yeah, so like, I would call them. I would call them all and I would just say, hey, Steve, I gotta make sure I'm doing up. this. So this is my shit. Uh, what are you doing? Oh, oh, you're gonna go. Oh, you're going two seven five or two uh, one two seven five. Ah, you know what, man? I think it's. I think we should. I think we could get another hundred thousand bucks for this house. Like, why don't we try that? This and I've done it with other agents. Like, I've I've I forced them to come up on price. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like there one Ajax or uh, listing we had in Ajax for a bungalow on Highly. I called the other agent and I convinced them to list higher. Yeah. Yeah. Convince them to list high. I got to call. I got to call. You're right. I'm going to call that the coming soon sign for sure. Yeah. Call them. Just to make sure what their price is going to be. I'll call them. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, by the time we get to the market, we got the stager going in on the weekend. Then it's the photography is already done exterior. You just got to do interior shots. Yeah. Um, You'll be up and running midweek, right? This thing is, the, the, you know, it's, it's a divorce case. So the yeah. kids don't know yet. It's, it's, it's oh, a little, okay, it's okay. touchy, right? And I don't know if the neighbors know that this is, you know, that's why they're, they're yeah. selling, right? So it's one of those things you got to. Obviously, you coach them and everything. Tell them to shut up, right? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. No, I got Yeah, you're right. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call yeah, an agent. Call yeah, I'll for sure. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, cool. if he comes on a two nine nine, we're we're one two nine nine. That's not gonna be good. But they, but they, they might. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, but I think you preempt them and tell them like, hey, you know what? Because the other part part of it is is that they're gonna be so informed. I don't think a lot of agents will do this, right? So the thing is, is that now their client is gonna say, well, I saw another coming soon sign. And be like, oh yeah, yeah, talk to Steve, great guy. Yeah. You know, he's gonna be doing this, 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 and whatever else like that. I think we should move towards this thing. Like, they're gonna have a more collaborative relationship with for their sure. thing, so it's value add for them at the same time. They're gonna not see you as a competitor instead of a partner yeah, yeah. Uh, when you guys are listing together. Uh, and then at the same time, they're gonna say, oh yeah, you know, Steve's a good you guy, know, call me You know, agents are, are a little bit uh, waspy too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call, yeah. I'll let you know how that goes, yeah. but some of them will- I'd like to know. Just just wait to it and, and you'll see the price when it comes out. You know how they are. Wow. Then you gotta pretend to be a, a buyer and call them. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know, man. I bury those bastards. <laughs> uh, like, I, I would well, bury look, them. Well, look at when we listen to Angus, that, that gentleman that helped us sell. Yeah, he, he helped us so sell. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. everything. You need any other information? Oh my gosh, just call great. me. He was great. <laughs> <laughs> we he gave us information on stuff we needed to ask for. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, yeah, that would sell for this. This yeah, is this. Yeah. Is this. <laughs> call me back. Good guy. Yeah, but that's bit, good. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little, yeah. <laughs> no, good guy. Yeah, Help this out fair a lot, enough. Because we yeah, yeah. got those numbers. No, no, no. Yeah. We got them. Yeah. Cool. That's it, buddy. Good. Are we still recording? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. So, topic. What, what was the? So, just just got reported this week, just about the insolvencies, um, the expected over the next couple of years. Now, this is just kind of touching base, like even str uh, strategy for our clients too. Yeah. If you want to buy or sell and stuff like that, we have to pay attention to this. 
because this is not just noise. This is reality, and we sure. know this because we see it happening around us. People that have taken on you know bigger mortgages than they should, and uh, taken on bigger mortgages yeah. than they should, and then at the same time, like uh, people that have sell properties. Uh, that had consumer debts, rolled them in, did this debt consolidation yeah. within their mortgage, yeah. uh, and now basically have a really, I would say, high mortgage versus you know very close to what the value of the property is. Absolutely. And th this is a situation where they can kind of end up into. This is a situation, yeah, and I think, so, th so this is, it's good and bad, like naturally. So the good thing is, is if, if, um, if you're okay, like that, that racial, you're okay. This is not going to affect you. But I mean, if you're ultimately stretched, yeah. you buy, so I'll give you an example. There's someone in, I won't even say the area, but so they, they have a house that was, I know because of our, our lending partners, right? With the private mortgage, they asked us for money, but it's just over, like you can't lend yeah, money. Yeah, you can't on, justify on, it. So basically a two, $2. $2.2 million property, $2 million mortgage. Wow. There's only 200 Gs left. Private. Oh. What's the rate? Private. Yeah, I wouldn't even fund it. I, I can't no, even consider I, I, I don't it. Even know can't who, even consider it. Eight percent on. I wouldn't on that even money. do that. I think it's like eleven oh. G's a month on interest well, only. I, lucky for them, they got eight percent. If you ask a prick like me if I had the money, it's like fifteen. What's the house worth? Don't tell the, me the, 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 the drum roll. <laughs> one, one, about one nine. Oh my god. If you're God. lucky. So you're, you're, it's 300K backwards, right? Oh, so, if, so they got 2 million, so it's 100K. So, they, so, so okay, not to get off topic, yeah. but who's, what are they securing the money against? I don't know who lent the money out. But who would secure it? Like, what are they, like, okay, when we lend out money and we secure the asset, Maybe I'm looking, I'm looking have, to see what the spread is on the house. At least so, it's 80, so, 20 so. is minimum, but not even that is a little bit too risky. I think, especially in today's market, you want to do at least 70, 60, 70. Yeah, yeah like 70, value. okay, I'll deal with yeah. 70, 70, 75. Yeah, 70, yeah. 75, you can yeah. deal with. You got 25, 30% play equity, in it, yeah. sure, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Maybe maybe they're leveraged on another another they property. They added another property. Something's to this mix. there, yeah. right? If they added it another has property. Then for be. sure, that's the way of doing it. But what I'm saying is, you know, the, I don't know who I don't know the people personally. I don't know who they are or where they live exactly. But um, this is a time to get out of that, like naturally, because because even at two million dollar range right now, like I'm having a few listings coming up at this range, they're still moving. Like before this takes place, because what they're saying is, so what they said, bankruptcies are down. Yeah, five percent. But consolidation proposals are up ten percent. So what happens in the record high of seventy thousand? Do you lose your house? No. So what they're doing is consolidating line and credit lines of credits, credit cards, and stuff like that, and they're just consolidating into one one payment rather than having your credit card at eighteen or twenty two percent or whatever it but is. Do you think that's? But do you think that's like one step towards? Yeah. Like like the last step before you have to go this 100%. route. Hundred percent. Well, so think about if it. You don't straighten your shit out. Like you, you're going to be in a situation where, where naturally you're going to have to be bankrupt. Fair enough. Yeah. This is like one step before. Fair enough. Death, yeah. Financial death. You know, it, it, so two things. If, if like that extreme case that I just talked about, if you're in that situation, you got to consolidate de debt, unload the property, lose 100K, whatever it is, even if it's 150 with commissions and everything out of the way. I think get into something different. Like take take your you know what's I think fifty k left of that and, and do something with it. I don't know. Yeah. Like just rent for temporarily. But I mean I think there's not going to be a light at the end of the tunnel for that particular property with that that amount of debt. It's not like you're you're fifty percent. It's not going to get paid better. off. Yeah, let, let, get let's better. say it's a two million dollar property. You got a million dollar mortgage. You got a million dollars of equity. Sure. Fair enough. And you're going to consolidate debt. You know, you got a, a line of credits, 20K, a, a visa's 20K, and you consolidate into one payment. That's a different situation. That you could hold on to as long as you're a high income earner and stuff like that. Sure. But I'm talking like you're at that extreme level. There's nothing left and you got to consolidate. Uh, so so what would you say is the extreme level? Like 80% debt? Like, like so, so the example easy number is a million dollars, right? Yeah. You have a million dollar house yeah. and you owe $800,000. It's still 20% down, right? So like the case I just presented was like 10% and it's, and it's, uh, I guess if you're waiting, it, okay. So, so, so an interest only an interest only. Wow. It's 11 G's a month. Oh my goodness. Is that what it works out to? I don't know. 8% makes me scared. on, uh, it makes me scared on 2 billion. What's 8% on 2 million. Yeah. Yeah. 8% annually. Right. Of course. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's huge, bro. Yeah. It's 13, 13, three. Interest only. Oh my there's God. no, there's no light at the end of that channel. If it, if you had a million dollars down, you know what I'm saying, like yeah. a fifty percent. But how much is a million dollar mortgage, man? A million bucks. Well, half of that, I guess. Yeah. On, on a well, private. It's, it's like five thousand dollars. No. Fair enough. Yeah. At, at three. What's the rate? Because right and now, and like I'm looking at four seventy five a month. Four seventy five a month for every hundred thousand dollars that you mm -hmm. have, right? So this would be ten. So yeah, it's like five thousand bucks. With a a bank. 
Yeah, with the A bank. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. you got to be clean, clean, yeah. clean. Yeah, yeah, so you have a yeah. million dollar mortgage at five thousand bucks a month. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. you're high, you're making four or five hundred thousand dollars a year. You have that particular mortgage. You have to consolidate some debt. It's okay. Like this is fine. You consolidate. Talking about those extreme cases, yeah. where right now is probably the best opportunity for them to unload it. So, so like, uh, like we talked about this very briefly before we started yeah. recording. So, like one of the examples, like I, I think that would be relevant, and I could put it into picture it right would be somebody like my ge uh, geography again it's like pickering right if somebody's in pickering that has been thinking of saying hey like my payments are getting really high like i don't know what's going to happen over here like things are getting very tight but i could purchase this property in oshawa or bowmanville Fair enough. and basically yeah. what i could do is i have you know a million dollar property in pickering yeah. but i could replace it for like 650 or seven hundred thousand yes. dollars in oshawa or yes. bowmanville yes maybe i'll downsize a little bit or whatever else like that yes. but what i do is i sell it and then i'll have like a two hundred thousand dollar buffer where i could pay off more of the property and more of the debt absolutely and i'll be in a in a better situation yeah if somebody is thinking about doing that say in a year from now and they're thinking that oh well the market will be better and so that two hundred thousand dollars I might have three fifty yeah I think that's the wrong decision yeah I think I agree with right you. so the thing I is is that you, if yeah. you have it in your mind I think right now so I think this should appeal to people that have it in their mind that says yeah. hey like things are getting tight yeah. and you you already have that alarm in your head saying things aren't looking right and and I'm feeling like I can't breathe anymore yeah, yeah. that and and you're thinking that hey like I can actually get out of this but I got to make a move over here but next year market is going to get better I wouldn't bank on that happening yeah. I would say if you have that inkling to do it, I would do it right now. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Because I, I don't think, I think we agree that we don't know where the market is going to go. I don't think it's going to go down either. I, yeah. I don't think that, is, I don't think it's going to go down and I don't think you're going to have a gain. I think you're going to basically see more or less a flat market. Yeah. And it's not going to make anything better. You're going to see a flat market against inflation going up. So really you're down. Yeah. No, uh, fair enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so it's not going to get better in a year. So if, if somebody is in a position where they yeah. need to... Just un unload it now. Yeah, yeah, unload it now. Yeah. yeah. I, I agree with you 100%. I think there's... But situ sorry, one other yeah. thing, but situation can get scarier. Like, okay, yeah. so, so you had a 5% uh, increase, was it, in bankruptcy? So 5%, uh, down 5% in bankruptcy, but 9% but in consumer proposals. Then so how consolidation, 70,000 so, more yeah, cases. So how long is that longevity? Okay, so if you're already at a point where you're consolidating... Do you know what I mean? Uh, how long are you going to be able to hold on to the rest of the things at the yeah. same time? So there could be a chance. There, there could be a chance where this market will start to go down. Like, we don't know. We, we don't know. So there's many, many, many variables for sure. Number one, we have a ton of inventory. So I was, as I was mentioning, one of, I don't know if it was in a podcast or my Mondays with Steve, it was the uh, building permits that were pulled. Yeah. Record high in December. Maybe we talked on the podcast. Yeah. But that, we got to translate that. We have to like, you know, people see this and say, wow, you know, people are starting to build again. Those houses were sold about a year, year and a half yep. ago, right? Or even two years, depending on how big, where the project is. If it's a condo, it's going to be two years ago. And, you know, what they do, a builder does is they get the land, they get it proposed, they get it through the city, they got to make changes. This is a year, year and a half process. And then when they're, this is all stamped and approved, ready to go, then they pull up building, building permits naturally. Yeah. So imagine that's like a year and a half, two years process yeah. until the building permits come out. So these building permits getting pulled now is because of the sales in the past. So, so that's And these are sales in 17. 16, 16 and a half, 17. 16 and a half, 17, yeah, yeah. for sure. To, you know, year Where the market was high. Fair enough. So now these guys are gonna have to get into these properties. And if, you're, if you see a lot of new construction, cause we're in, in you know, Woodbridge, Vaughan, Kleinberg, that area there, Nobleton. So that's ultimately a lot of new construction going yeah. there, like suburbanites, right? Yeah. So ultimately you're starting to see like a lot of product come in the market vacant. Cause people either bought them on speculation or they closed them and they got to sell them because they're gonna remain in their same property because that property lost value naturally than what they originally thought it was gonna yeah. go up and then bridge their gap on the, the, uh, the bigger house. So a lot of see-throughs. Uh, as I call them, anyways, and so now you're starting. To, you're, it, it's it's you're going to see more inventory like this, right? So I would say unload, unload now. If you like, you're saying you have that choked feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you're already there, just just do it. Instead of consolidating through like a company, just consolidate yourself. Sell the house, pull up, you know, get into a, a nice area. And like, there's so many beautiful neighborhoods. Sure, there right? is. And you can get into a beautiful area, similar house. You put away, you bank two, three hundred G's, a thousand dollars. We pay off more of your mortgage that way. You like, like you breathe and, easier. And you're consoling yeah. your debt. If you have your line of credit and your visa, you mm -hmm. can like sell that, get into this newer home, clean that all up, and then have a fresh start. Yeah. Right. And this is the time to do it. I would imagine. And, and see, the thing is, is that I, I, the other thing I would caution people and say is, is that 
I don't think that this they should real be talk, banking. Bro. Yeah, yeah, but but I don't, but I don't think that they should be banking anything on the market whatsoever. No, no. Like like if you are already at a point where you you're you're already in risk, yeah. uh, you should not wait on the market. If you can see this position where you can reduce your debt two, three, four hundred thousand dollars, you should immediately do that. Like if you're already at a feeling where I cannot deal yeah, with this, go. or I'm drawing out of line of credit to yeah. do this, like. This is a really, 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 really bad indication. They have to remember 2020, we have a new government. Either yeah. it's going to be the same party going forward or there's going to be a new party uh, going forward. New structure overall is going to happen. If, if, if it's the old party, they're going to continue on. If it's a new party and they open up the books and they say, how are we going to manage this? This is insane. We have to make so many changes for the, to better Canada because at, this, at this, the rate we're going, there's not going to be a Canada crash, left, yeah. right? Yeah. So... Yeah, so that's that's you know we gotta you gotta be careful, right? A lot of variables, but I mean, 2019 will still be a good year to buy and sell. Yes. If you're a, a family that needs a larger home because you're, you're growing, do it. I think you're gonna downsize, yeah. retire, do it. But if I think you're we're speculating, talking about, what we're talking do about it. the we're talking about a perspective from personal finances. Fair enough. Yeah, like, we're yeah. not talking about. I don't care what happens. Yeah. At the end of the day, I'm such a confident and cocky person. I'll tell you at yeah. the end of the day, yeah. I think that I'm gonna be fine. Uh, yeah. I think that. Trev is going to do around 100,000 transactions no matter what happens. Up yeah. market, down market, yeah, I don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and I collaborate so much. There's so much other stuff that's yeah. going on that we are always recalibrating ourselves. Recalibrating, and readjusting. The market that we are in. 100%. So in terms of transactional value, I'm fine. Yeah. You're going to be fine. Yeah, yeah. Good agents are going to be okay. 1,000%, yeah. So no, nothing I'm to not worry worried about, about that. that. Yeah, absolutely. But what I'm worried about is people's personal finances. Yes. That's my yes. main concern with yes. this podcast right now. Like, yes. I don't want to see people over leverage themselves. They yeah. have an opportunity possibly to get out right now. They should do it. 100%. Yeah, yeah I agree, 100%. Yeah. Even, it, it, it's, it's a time. Even consumer debt, right? The, just get rid of all that shit, right? Even the big cars, get all get rid of that. Well, what's the point? If, Fru if you're being gonna, frugal uh, is the new cool, buddy. You know just what? Just look at these shirts, 20 bucks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like I spill coffee and I don't care. You know, You're still going to try to get that out. <laughs> yeah, right, uh, no, but so even going back to car sales, so yeah. a good friend Nelson, he's in Mercedes. So I, I yeah. got like the inside. I just, I like to know everything that's going on sure. all the time. And so, you know, luxury car market is starting to fall in sales and they're down six, 7%. And that's coming from them, from them, their Canadian report. They had like sort of like yeah. a meeting. We had like a reckoning in a sense. And, uh, you know, you're starting to see less spending. So like I said, back to this, if you got something, if you're a little bit, like you feel uncomfortable with the payment, you, you don't see a light of that tunnel, unload it now, get into a better area, cash, bank cash, and then- and This is the right time well. to tighten up. Yeah, this 100%. is the right time yeah, to tighten up because sure. I, I think everything is gonna be fine, but the thing is, is that there's so much uh, noise, I would say, that's going on right now. Yeah. And, and there's mixed- variables. Th yeah. There's mixed news, you know what I mean? Like yeah. there was one article you were showing me last week where the news is so like, messed up that people are buying into they're talking about toronto sales but somebody in woodbridge is looking at this and saying like oh yeah look everything is fine over here yeah, but like yeah, yeah the way that the media is positioning this information is so fake it is, uh, it's yeah. so fake uh like you and and at the end of the day you think that you're reading this newspaper to get you information and insight yeah. you're just screwing with your head 100 percent. yeah you're just getting screwed with if you if you look look where i get my stuff this is all with the mortgage agents yes. get sent this is like real stuff that's why it's literally four paragraphs yeah it's like how i like to There's read no news fluff. it's just it's just like straight yeah. to the point no bullshit yeah. when you read like stuff from the toronto star and stuff like that it's someone needs to they have to make some sort they have to write something for that day yeah and they're just gonna you know they're gonna write sure. they're gonna just go through yeah, it right yeah yeah, yeah. we're gonna be careful no. But uh, I, I think this, so this topic itself, like personal finance, is a whole different yeah, thing yeah. that we could get into yeah. because I'm such a huge believer in not racking up debt. Absolutely. Uh, I yeah. would rather pay for crap like right up front. Cash. Uh, and and yeah. if I don't have it, I don't want it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I, I'm going to do this one post uh, later on on my own personal thing is like, and I think I've mentioned it before too, is like, you know, it's just like, like a lot of the crap doesn't matter, dude. Like my first suit that I had for like this whole real estate business. It's from International Clothiers. I'm pretty damn sure it was like not more than 150 bucks. Like maybe it was a hundred. Yeah, like, yeah. but dude, like that's every single picture you see of me uh, out there right now is in this hundred dollar suit. No way. <laughs> dude, every picture is in this hundred dollar suit. The blue shirt I'm wearing has like worn out on the yeah, sleeves yeah, yeah. and whatever else like that. But dude, like, did it matter? No, no. It didn't matter at the end of the day. So people try to do these kind of things to like, I don't know. I, for me, I just cannot digest it. I can't even tell you why they do it because I, 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 to me, it doesn't make any logical sense. Yeah. So I just hope people don't bury themselves in this shit. People are, people yeah. are lost mentally, yeah. you know, and, and 
So my first suit, same thing. We went to uh, Tip Top Tailors. My card got declined originally too, man. Yeah, what's the same like, shit? I literally, st I, I didn't hem the pants. I stapled them. Oh, dude. I, I, and I, I, then I, I painted the, the staple black because it was like a shine. It looked, <laughs> At least you were more advanced than me. Dude, I remember going, when I was still working corporately, oh I remember going to the first Christmas party they had in 2004. And I had pants from Max that I got on sale. And the pants were so goddamn long, I didn't have money to get them hemmed. And if I gave them to my mom, like, you know, God bless her, man. But they'd be fucking crooked. <laughs> I don't want that shit either. So what it did was it got an iron and I ironed them like so tight or whatever. And they got uh, safety pins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Safety pins and put it. We're sitting at the dinner over there and some someone needed a safety pin. Like, okay, I got a safety pin. They're like, they're like looking at me like, why is this guy got safety pins in his pants? <laughs> Is this a growing up, babe. Dude, you just got to do what you yeah. got to do, right? Yeah. Like, I, I would not have spent that 10 or 12 bucks. To get Probably I didn't have it, the 10 or 12 yeah. bucks. But, like, I still wouldn't have spent it, dude. Absolutely. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. to me, it didn't make any sense. Yeah. Safety pins were free. I yeah. got them for yeah. free. Yeah. yeah, I just safety Dude, I stapled them. That's Imagine crazy, it was bro. stapled. See, I was more frugal yeah. than you, I think. Because I was no, you, worried about damaging. You still are the, more frugal than me. Yeah, yeah. but I, was I would be worried about damaging, damaging the pants with the staples. What if I still grow? I'm only 21 or 22. Oh, you can put it. I never thought of that. I just did. No, but it's just funny because going back to those stories, I think it's so frugal. Like, I think people got a, 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 a misconception about it because everyone wants to just, you know, Dom Perignon. Like, are you kidding? Like, dude, like, it's something, I go to restaurants. I went to a restaurant in Kleinberg. Order a bottle of wine. Sure. There's nothing less than $150 a bottle there. Especially because I know about like how yeah. wine's made because I make it personally. I, I like watch into you know the way I'm obsessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I want to learn everything about it, right? So I ordered a bottle of wine. It's like one hundred and fifty dollars a bottle, and it's not like a great bottle, like it. But it's it was served like at furnace temperature, not even room temperature. Like room temperature in Europe, so people get confused with this. They say I'm gonna serve you wine at room temperature, not North America at twenty two to twenty four degrees. Room temperature in Europe, because there's no insulation, is like 16 to 18 degrees. That's good. So they gave me this bottle of wine, bloody hot. And I'm like, like why? Like, do your Such research. Such an expensive bottle. And, $150, and it's cheap in, in, in a lot of people's yeah. eyes. Like yeah. $150 is not, not a good bottle of wine. But I did not enjoy it because the, the temperature the temperature was shit. And it's just like, you know, um, even the way they approach it. But they didn't it ruins the buzz. It. They, didn't, they didn't put yeah. it in, in a, a decanter. Like... I don't know. It's just, you got to do things right. I'd rather have a, a $20 bottle of California wine. Yeah. And it was, like, you know, at the right temperature, let's sure. say 16, 18 degrees and just a little bit decanted. I'd take that over any day because that's quality versus like, hey, look at me. Look what I'm drinking. Let me put it on Instagram and like post what I'm drinking. Like, Dude, like I don't care. The next thing I yeah. want to post and I was told not to do it. Like, you, like, I, like, like listen, I, like I, I go to McDonald's or whatever yeah. else like that and my friend hates it, dude. I'm on the app all the time. Like, what's on special? Like, what can I get? <laughs> dude, like in my car right Which now, friend? if I just walk around, like I have buddy. The, like, the McDonald's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so like he's always like, dude, you're like, just get the Big Mac meal. I'm like, no, man, I'm going to get the junior chicken meal. It's five <laughs> bucks. I get medium fries. I get the burger and I get a drink for five bucks. Yeah. Why am I going to spend... 10 11 bucks, bucks or 12 yeah. bucks yeah, yeah. on this fucking meal. It doesn't make sense. Right now in my car over there, there's a stack of coupons, bro. I got KFC. I got Burger King. I got Wendy's. I really? Got, yeah, man. Why will I spend two bucks more than I have to? When I get the goddamn yeah, coupon enough. in the mailbox, dude. The mailbox not bringing me anything valuable except my coupons. Nowadays. You're better than me. I'm dude, the better. works hamburgers, right? Like the works. Burger there is like 17 bucks. Where's this? Bucks, the works. works. Oh, works, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like 16 bucks, 17 bucks for a hamburger. I don't go there. I go there when I get the coupon, bro. You, get, you buy a burger, you get a free burger and a side. Done. I walk in with the coupon, man. Uh, what, is this burger going to... This is the one I can get? Okay, good. Give it to me. Still, man, I get two burgers, two sides, and a pitcher of beer. I usually go there with my brother. Yeah, it's yeah. not like 70 bucks with a coupon, man, or 60 bucks with a coupon. Like... I'm not going to spend a hundred bucks there. Sweet. So you're yeah. smart. No, it's good. And that's here. So you, you convert that extra cash that you save into where you need to put it. Yeah. Mortgages, investments, yeah, stuff that's like right. that. I don't yeah. care, man. I, I don't give a shit. What's my saying? Swish LA, not STK, yeah, right? Man. It's the I same thing. $60 dinner versus 600 Dude, I'll yeah. save four bucks, like three bucks. I don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah. no, it's smart. You I'll have to. Yeah. You have to. Frugal's the new cool, man. Yeah, man. We're going to start making it cool. Yeah. I, it's already cool. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm seeing the benefit to it. <laughs> Good for you, buddy. Yeah, man. Austin, ready to sign off? Yeah, man. Yeah, okay, cool, buddy. Sign off, man. All right, guys. <laughs> this was East Meets West. If you guys have any questions, we got a couple more. We never got to them today, but next yeah. week we'll cover Eight it subscribers, off. over 30. That's oh, pretty that's cool. Amazing, yeah, man. yeah. And uh, and the uh, watchable minutes went up like seven, 800 minutes. That's awesome. So that's pretty good. But oh, before we do sign off, actually, and I think I, yeah. I mentioned before, too, more people commenting yeah, on it. Maybe yeah. they're not liking it, subscribing, or whatever yeah. else like that. I get more comments about yeah. it. The more people I'm talking to, more people are like, Absolutely. hey, I, I caught that. I, I saw that, or whatever. Yeah. I, last week, I think we talked about, or two weeks ago, we talked about one of my clients that uh, I said I was biased. Of course, we went through this long trek, but I eventually yeah. did convince them to move into Pickering Ajax. Fair enough. And yeah. she's like, screenshots it and sends it to me. So <laughs> I, I knew you were biased. <laughs> But yeah, so I mean, it's good. That's I, good I, yeah. I think this is yeah. pumping out good information. Even real news, like this yeah. is real. No one's talking yeah. about this. Why is, this, no, they why is nobody talking about this? This is not this? sexy. It's not sexy. Yeah, yeah. that's right. So they this won't is, talk about it, bro. This is the truth. Yeah. And this is how we're going to direct our clients and make the best financial decisions of their lives. This is what it is. Where we're going to win every time, buddy. Yeah, cool. All right, bud. Survival. Yeah, man. And prosper. Peace out. Ciao.